Hello everybody, it is Zen, and today I'm going to be reviewing another book in the Stormlight Archive. Yeah, we got Edge Dancer right here. Uh, yeah, this is Stormlight Book 2.5, so it's a novella technically, but it's bound in its own book unless you take Arcanum Unbounded. Uh, and so I am going to review it on its own because it's about 200 pages. What is it? Yeah, about 260 pages. It's big enough to be a book on its own, so uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and review it. A lot of reviews like these with these kind of books I know attract a lot of people that aren't subscribed to me, and so uh, I'd like to ask you guys. If you'd be so kind as to hit the subscribe button, I'm going to be reviewing Oathbringer eventually. I'm currently reading it, but, you know, I'll tell you guys at the end. There's going to be a little bit of a gap between uploads and a little bit of an announcement. So, wait to the end if you care about that. And if you don't care about that, subscribe. Because if you don't subscribe, then how am I going to read? How am I going to read? Tell me right now. But yeah, just wait till the end if you want to hear the announcement. Let's get to the review, though. Edge Dancer is really powerful. So it is a very simplistic book that takes place outside of the main storyline of the, you know, Stormlight Archive. It's sort of a, a side plot that is part of, you know, one character that Sanderson really wanted to explore because this character would be used significantly later on in the series. And so he didn't want to just like leave her without this much exposition. I think we had one chapter from her in an interlude in Words of Radiance and that's about it. So we do have this now and uh, it'll be much, much better because now when we actually see her character, we'll actually enjoy it a lot more. And I think that this book really did well in that regard. The exploration of Lyft's character in this was phenomenal, honestly. We do have a great overview within the actual Stormlight book, but in this one we kind of have a larger overview because the Stormlight interlude was only like 30 pages. Now this one was much longer than that. And because of that, we got to explore her character significantly more. We got to put her in specific situations that I really enjoyed because Brandon Sanderson, he has a really good way of exploring characters. And, uh, you know, I'm not the greatest fan of his heart or his writing style or stuff like that, but I do very much respect how he is able to technically put characters to the test, put them to their limits, and really explore their character definitions. And that is why I really like this book. I want to rate this book very, very highly because everything that it did was as good as it could possibly be. Most definitely, Lyft's character. Lyft has a very quippy kind of, uh, you know, not very smart character, but she is, you could tell, very street smart. And so we have to explore this in a very specific way. And so Brandon Sanderson tosses her onto the street and has her put in the middle of some kind of massive plot that, you know, what seems very big from the beginning, but as you go along, you see it's much more specific and small. So we can actually handle it in such a small book. What really annoyed me in this book was the connection to the interlude. So I, this doesn't seem like a bad concept in theory, but I think it was very badly executed. Now this this is directly, you know, right after the her story in the interlude. Maybe it's a week or so after. And so we hear the effect of that interlude in this because they're, they're directly related, what's going on here. And to me, that just felt really, really boring. I didn't like that they connected that up because the story in the interlude was one of my least favorites. The character itself is great. Sanderson explored the character very, very well in both scenarios. This one significantly better with so many great situations to put her in. But the story itself, I think, in the interlude was pretty garbage. Garbage for Sanderson standards. It's not a bad story, really, but it doesn't reach any decent heights. It's not something I would consider, you know, something I like. It's just there. That means that the bad plot that I got in the interludes was conclu concluded in this book. So I I just didn't, didn't enjoy that that much because the plot itself is very convoluted, not convoluted in like a, a very, you know, in the traditional sense of the word, convoluted as in, I don't understand why she is feeling this way. I don't understand what is specifically going on, why this great massive plot, which it really is. This book has a very massive plot with some incredible villains. Uh, why is it being reduced to such a small plot? Like we, we continue going and we're like, this literal god of a villain is just not gonna be a god? Like what's going on? He's just chilling and like the things that he's done is talked about. But we don't really get to see too much of who he is really he, like in the uh, in the interlude we kind of see that in this we kind of see it but I, I see no explanation to his character really his character is very specific in a way but that specificity is not explored in either book the villain it's not a bad villain don't like that's not what i'm saying it's a great villain in theory but the execution of the villain within the tiny interlude like 30 page interlude and this 200 page book it was really badly done because there's so much you can do with them. There's so much. He's such a great character. 
and you just make him do this? Like, that's my criticism. I think one of my favorite parts was the, uh, what was it called? I think one of my, I think that one of my favorite parts in this entire book would be the twist at the end. Something happens at the end, and there's like a great, great search for this person, and there's a twist at the end, and the twist is very cool, and I really enjoyed every aspect of that. I just think it was badly, like, written in terms of actual, you know, prose. I think, you know, Sanderson does a really bad job of actually encompassing beautiful, dis disturbing images. He, he's fine with normal stuff, but when you go to like some kind of emotional depth like that, he really lacks. And so that didn't have a great impact on me, but I love the concept itself. I've gotten used to his kind of writing. It's not it's not great, but it, it it's okay. It, it's decent enough for me to go through it. And it worked out for this book, and it worked out for that scene enough that I didn't want to like bang my head against the wall, but it was not done to the best of its ability. The concept itself, wonderful. Love that. And I feel like I've talked so little about the book, but I've really talked about everything encompassing the book. The beginning of the book was fairly lame. Uh, the inciting event going through into that area was uh, not that fun, I think. Then we go into the main plot, which was extremely, it seemed like a very great plot, even though it was extremely big. We didn't get almost any details at all. And when we did get some details, it completely reduced what this could have been into something so small and so lame that I really didn't care. And in the end, something incredible came out of that lame plot, and from there, that wasn't described great, but I, I, I'm I, happy for what it was. Finishing it off, I, I guess I like how it ended off, right at the end with some kind of character change. That was fun in itself, but, you know, I feel like I wanted something more from this book. And that is where my flaw as a reviewer comes to show. I shouldn't be expecting more from a 200 page book like this. Sanderson ain't Shakespeare, foreshadowing for my next video, but I really, really, you know, I shouldn't be criticizing it like that. This is a tiny book, and that's where I want to draw the line. Simply speaking, what is done in this book is done well, technically, really well technically, done pretty well story-wise. And just for me to think, I wish I had more from the story is a flaw because this is already significantly longer than what Sanderson wanted it to be and what happened here is just that I don't want this to be longer if this was longer I feel like it would have suffered more and I think therefore this is the best that it could possibly be and for that alone I want to give it a four out of five just because of it being you know not incredible but still being really good but you know just because I know that there's nothing that can make it better this is the best that it could possibly be, and it is a good book. I, I did enjoy this. It's had really fun character and really fun moments. Because of that, I'm actually going to give it a 5 out of 5. This is on par, honestly, with the rest of the Stormlight books. It's just not as epic. It's on par uh, with a great rating, just as everything else. So that's going to be my review for this book. If you enjoyed, please hit that like button down below, and please subscribe. If you are new to the channel, if you're just here to see the review, please subscribe. I do plan on doing a lot of Sanderson reviews in the future. I do have Mistborn down there. I have Wheel of Time up there. I'm planning on getting onto that soon. Stephen King all the time. Movie reviews. Lots of MCU reviews are coming out. And then I'm going to do X-Men reviews and I'm going to do DCU EU reviews. I'm going to do all the reviews. So if you like reviews, subscribe for that. And uh, thank you guys for watching and yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. But for those of you that want to hear the announcement, let me get to that. Now I'm going to go in one long cut because I don't feel like editing this part. <laughs> this isn't that important. But uh, in the future, I am going to be going on a vacation. So I'm going to be out of my house, out of my room, not have access to so many books. I will have some books, but I won't be able to do reviews and edit the reviews and get them out to you. Because of that, uh, I'm sorry, but there's going to be a kind of a gap in reviews. Um, the, the trip itself is supposed to be for one month. I do plan on getting, I do currently have this video ready to go up, uh, Othello, which I'm going to record in a minute, um, and the MCU video, another MCU video, and that's it. Those are the four books that I have planned to review, meaning that I'm going to be missing maybe two or three reviews. So that's all I've got. And, and you know, I, I understand maybe you guys are thinking, why don't you just read some smaller books? Well, I would love to. But I'm kind of reading Stormlight at the moment. I'm kind of reading Oathbringer, and I want to rush to get that done before I go off on my vacation because I don't want to bring along the massive book and, you know, just that weight to not have that weight along with me. I'd rather just finish it off here, and so I want to go ahead and rush through that, try to get a review out for you if I possibly can, but that's going to be a tight stretch because doing the math, 
I probably won't be able to finish it before I go on vacation. And if that happens, I'm gonna leave it here. I'm gonna start another book. And so you're just gonna have to wait longer for reviews. So that's all I got for you guys. Uh, yeah, it is gonna be a little bit longer between reviews in the future. Uh, I know a lot of you are not gonna watch the Othello review, which is fine. I know, I want you guys to watch the reviews you wanna watch and not that many people wanna watch some Shakespeare reviews while on this fantasy channel. And that's totally cool. So I'm gonna give this you know, announcement on this video, uh, just to be aware of that. And, uh, you know, thank you guys for viewing. Thank you guys for all your support. Hey, uh, looks like I hit a hundred subscribers in the time that I was not posting my video. So sorry about that. Thank you for the hundred subscribers. Uh, I really, really appreciate all the support that you guys have given me. Sorry for randomly being here, but I'm almost done editing the video and I want to like put it up as soon as I possibly can. So, you know, uh, but yeah, thank you guys for a hundred subscribers. I really, really appreciate it. You know, uh, it's it, I, I have another channel which I've been working on for three years and it took me absolutely forever like years for me to get to 100 subscribers this one hit in a couple of months that's pretty nice so thank you guys uh I don't really care about the numbers too much you know I don't check on check in on it I was last before this last I checked I was on like 85 so this is pretty cool because somebody commented and shout out to superb pickle for being my 100th subscriber uh thank you that's pretty cool I hope you guys stay and I hope you guys enjoy the videos. I'll be putting out this video, of course, right now. Uh, next video is going to be an Othello review, I believe, which is Shakespeare, so not that many people are going to care. Uh, that's fine. Um, then after that, I should be putting out an Oathbringer review if I possibly can make it because I have to finish it in a couple of days and re re review it and edit it and everything. So that's going to that's gonna be tough. So yeah, that's going to be pretty interesting. So thank you guys for your subscription. Thank you guys for your likes. Thank you guys for your support. Uh, I really appreciate it. Let me know if you guys want me to read any books. Let me know if you want me to focus on anything, anything at all. I love reading your comments. I love interacting with every single person who comments on these videos. So go ahead. I, I really appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.